Today I'm going to walk you through the install for a couple different pieces of software and the various methods that I use to install software and figure out how to install software. So the first piece of software today that we're going to test with is going to be Firefox. Firefox is a pretty common web browser and especially as of recent it's gaining popularity. So the first thing I did was Google Firefox download and Firefox MSI. So there's different ways to install software, right? But there's also different extensions. Now there's EXEs and MSIs. This would be the two most popular. Executables often have install parameters or switches that are a little bit harder to find, whereas MSI is a Microsoft standard that they adopted. And MSIs typically have the same switches to install them. And I'll show you that shortly. So you'll find the MSI page for Firefox here, deploy Firefox with MSI installers. Now on this page here, they link you here where to download the MSI. In addition, they also show you the different parameters you can use as well as the supported MSI exec options. So what I did is I went to the install page here. You'll see the option to download Windows 64 bit MSI. What this will do is this will install the MSI for Firefox. Now I'll rename mine just Firefox.msi uh, just for just for clarity purposes. And I created a script here, just a very simple script, just to show you how this is typically done. So Again, in the future, we'll make scripts that look better, that will do more, but this is a very beginner script. So the first thing we want to do is call MSI. So what MSI exec is, is this the MSI ex executable that installs MSI files, right? So you'll see here, let's do a command from. When you do MSI exec slash question mark, that's going to bring up the list of the parameters. So you'll see here it's pretty standardized, and you'll see this for almost all the MSI exec MSI files. So here you'll see package install, it'll be slash I. That's probably hard to see. But all of these are pretty standardized. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do MSI exec slash I. And then in quotations, we're going to put the directory of the installer. So for me, I put it in ctemp and I called it Firefox.msi. Now, after this, you want to determine what are we wanting to do with installer. For me, I'm envisioning we're installing this in a corporate environment where users do not want to be affected by the install of this and they do not want their computer to restart, right? So we're going to do slash quiet, right? which is you see here. And then we're also going to do slash no restart right here. We don't want the computer to restart. Now, if you do look at the MSI installer page for Firefox, they do say that this is a default option not to restart, but I feel like it's good practice to say that anyways, just in case it ever changes in the future, but also to let people in the, looking at the script to know. Um, the last option is slash L to see slash log. This is equivalent to slash L. There's two different ways to do it. So what we're doing here is we're creating a log and in quotations, we're going to put the path of this log. So here I just made it C slash temp slash Firefox install that text. So what's going to happen if we do in Firefox, you'll see that I don't have it installed, but if we hit run, it's going to run here. You'll notice this text file is complete. If we type in Firefox, you'll notice it's installed. Now with this logging, I want to show you something. You'll see installation success or error code status zero. Zero means successful. That's what you want to see. Sometimes you'll see exit code zero or error code zero. That means it's good. That my error code zero or exit code zero, that might look bad to you, but zero means successful. 
And now we have installed our browser. Here, I can launch it for you. And we are good to go. So that is covering the very basics of installing an MSI with MSI exec. The next piece of software we're going to cover is going to be Notepad++. Um, this is an executable. Unlike Firefox, this is not an MSI that's executable. So handling it is a little bit differently. So first, they have a Notepad++ user manual. And you'll notice on here, there's an option, one area for installer options. You'll notice it only accepts three command line options. This is rather rare because typically there's more command line options that you can add. But if you notice, there's three here, slash S for silent install, uh, slash no CRC for skipping CRC check, and slash D for specifying directory. Now, depending on your use case, you might want to add these options. But for my example, I'm going to opt for the silent install. Now, if you notice down here, it says the install options are case sensitive, meaning you must use slash capital S as lowercase s will not work. Now, the download can be found here. I just clicked installer and it will install an executable. For my example, I have renamed the executable to be notepad.exe for clarity. So here I'm specifying the install directory for the executable. Now, what you might notice that is different is I am not using MSI except I am using start slash process. And then I'm using an argument for start process to specify the file path. What this is going to do is it's going to start this process, which is the executable at this path. And what we're doing is we're passing an argument. So this is dash argument list. What that's going to do is any arguments you put in these quotations, they will run. So for this scenario, the only one I am wanting is the silent install. So that's slash capital S. If you're wanting to do slash D, you do space slash D and then your directory that you want. So for this, I'm going to run it. And what that's going to do is it's going to install Notepad++. We will give it a moment and we should see Notepad++. And as we can see, it is installed. So that covers the very basics of install and executable. Every executable is different. Uh, for example, this utilizes NSIS. This is a specific packaging of installers. There are various different types and each various type handles install parameters different. So it's something that you should always look into before you're installing a piece of software. 